Today we are going to discuss an issue that have been haunting our society for far too long the increasing violence against women in India it seems like every few days another tragedy strikes and yet the question remains are women in India truly free free to walk the streets without fear free to wear what they want pursue the careers they dream of and most importantly free to live as equals in a society that claims to value equality The recent heartbreaking case from West Bengal has once again shaken us to our core. A 31-year-old doctor, someone who dedicated her life to helping others, brutally raped. She was supposed to be safe. She was educated and independent, but none of that mattered. She became another statistic in a country where violence against women continues to rise unchecked. And this isn't just about one case. The victims of such horrendous crimes range from infants barely a month old to elderly women in their 90s. How far and how low has our society sunk? These incidents aren't isolated. They are a reflection of a deep-rooted problem in our society, one that cannot be fixed by candlelight marches or temporary protests. These actions bring attention to the issue, but real change requires us to start at the root, our homes, our schools, and the way we raise our children. From a young age, boys are taught that household work is for women, and men need to be tough, and they are the protectors. But why are only the men seem as strong? Why aren't we teaching our girls to be strong too, to protect themselves and to live without fear? Why is it always the woman of the house, whether it's a mother, a sister, or a wife, who shoulders all the household chores? Why aren't the men stepping up to share that responsibility? It's because from a young age boys are conditioned to believe that these tasks are beneath them that their role is to be the breadwinner the protector this conditioning is what fuels the toxic masculinity that leads to violence against women from a very young age even a boy is taught to protect his sister or mother but why aren't girls taught to protect themselves why are they conditioned to believe that their lives are confined to the safety of their homes This mindset is what fuels the atrocities we see today. If girls were taught from the start that their lives extend far beyond the four walls of their homes, maybe the horrific crimes of rape and sexual violence wouldn't be so common. Generational trauma passes from woman to woman, man to man. A boy who witnesses his mother being treated as inferior will likely carry that behavior forward when he starts his own family. It's not the fault of women that domestic violence and sexual abuse are on the rise. It's the result of how we as a society have conditioned our children. Here's something hard to reconcile. We worship goddesses like Durga, Lakshmi and Saraswati in India. We celebrate and reward them. And yet, where is that respect when it comes to the woman next door? Why does she become just a body to be used as a man's whim? Why is her dignity as a human being first and foremost stripped away without a second thought? And the worst part after these heinous crimes occur society doesn't always rally behind the victim instead we hear a chorus of justification excuses that attempt to shift the blame onto the woman herself why was she out so late what was she wearing she was asking for it these statements are not just insensitive they are a reflection of a deeply ingrained culture of victim blaming that permeates our society Rather than holding the perpetrators accountable we scrutinize the actions the clothing and the behavior of the victims creating a narrative that somehow it was their fault why is it that when a woman is attacked her morality is questioned instead of the criminal's actions why do we focus on what the victim did or did not do rather than on the heinous act that was committed against her This deflection serves only to protect the attackers and perpetuates a culture where the such violence continues unchecked. It's as if we are trying to find a reason to justify the crime rather than confront the reality of it. But let's be clear, there is never any justification for rape, for abuse, for violence. The only fault lies with the attacker and the only conversation we should be having is about bringing them to justice. Yet time and time again we hear excuses she provoked him or she shouldn't have been there these are not reasons they are excuses 
they are dangerous because they allow the real issues which is our society's tolerance for violence against women to remain hidden in the shadows and let's talk about the media coverage too often the focus shifts away from the crime and towards the character of the victim was she a good girl did she conform to societal expectations why is it that we still categorize women based on their behavior as if their worthiness of protection is dependent on whether or not they fit into a narrow mold of what society expects from them whether she is a doctor a student or someone simply walking home late at night the fact remains that no one no one deserves to be violated instead of condemning the action itself we allow discussions to devolve into arguments about dress codes and behavior we allow people to believe that if a woman acts properly she will be safe but the truth is the violence we see today has nothing to do with what women are wearing or how they behave it's about power control and a deep rooted misogyny that runs through our culture until we address these fundamental issues the violence won't stop as a society we need to stop justifying the actions of those who commit such crimes we need to make it clear that the responsibility for violence lies solely with the perpetrators no excuses no justifications just accountability these marches and protests while important are just the beginning real change will come when we as a society stop making excuses and start instilling values of respect equality and dignity in our children from the very beginning it's time to break the cycle of generational trauma it's time to stop fighting for equality when in so many ways women are already above men in aspects that truly matter compassion strength and resilience Let's stop excusing the behavior of those who harm women. Let's start teaching our boys and girls that respect is not negotiable, that dignity is not optional, and that freedom is the right for every person regardless of their gender. If you believe in this message, share it, talk about it, and most importantly, live it because change begins at home and it's long overdue.